This is assignment number seven. In this assignment, you're going to be using a for loop, while loop, if, and switch statements to be able to complete a communication system simulator. We're going to use some of the things you've already done, plus I'm going to expand on these different statements. To begin this, you're going to create a script file called control underscore flow.m. So do a new script underscore flow.m and then file save. The first thing in the script file is that you're going to create a command string so that it looks like this where you have on each row right zero right, one, left, one, right, zero. Pause the video and be able to create this in your script file at this time. Next, you're going to use what is called a for loop to interpret these command strings. So in order to do that, what you want to do is go through this command string for each line. You want to read that word or number and interpret what it means. If it's a right, you want to convert it into the number three. If it's a zero, you want to keep it zero. Right will be the number three. One will be one, and left will now be the number two. We want to put it into a variable called command num. So command num will look like this, where the three corresponds with right, zero, zero, three corresponds with right, one, left will be two, then a one, and then right will be three, and then a zero. So this is what you're trying to achieve using the for statement and the switch statement. So what a for loop does is it systematically will go through a, an array typically is what you usually use it for in a matrix and manipulate each element one element at a time. For example, say that I wanted to display each of these rows one after another. I could type just DISP and then to print the first row I would do one comma and a colon so that I get the whole, everything in the whole row. Then it would display right if I did two it will display the zero, three, it will display right again, four, it will display one, five will display left, and so on. So as you see here, the only difference between each of these steps is the, the number here. It changes from one, then goes to two, three, four, five. So the way to make that into a shortcut is to use what is called a for statement. What the for statement does is that it can use a variable instead of using one, two, three, four, five. It can use a variable and increment that variable each time and do the same thing as typing out the statement five times or we can do the whole amount of the command underscore str which is eight times. So the syntax looks like this where you type four. I'm going to call the temporary variable name index. You can name it anything that you want as long as it's not another function name in MATLAB. And you're going to set it equal to the range you're going to vary it from. In this case, we want to go from one all the way to the end of command underscore str to print each line out. And so that will go from one and we want to do it eight times. So we'll do one colon eight and then you're going to type in the commands that you want it to perform each time the index varies. So it's going to look like this. And then when you're done typing all the commands for the for loop, you're going to type end. What this is going to do is the first time it enters the for loop, 
it's going to set index to the value of 1. It will replace this index here with 1 and then display that first row of command underscore str. Then it's going to hit the end and it's going to go back because index is not the value at the very end, the 8 yet. So it increments by, a, by 1 each time and so index now, after it goes through once, will now become 2. Index being 2 will replace here the value of 2 and print out the second line. It then hits the end and is incremented again to 3. 3 is still less than 8, so it goes through, replaces index with the value of 3, and then increments again by 1 to 4. It will keep doing this till it gets to 8. When index equals 8 here, then when I end, it will increment it again by 1, which will be 9, which is larger than this value, and therefore it will stop doing the for loop. So, so now when I hit enter, you see here that it does indeed print out each row of this command underscore str. Another powerful thing in the for loop is that it doesn't always have to increment by 1. If I want to increment it by every other row instead, I can do the index equals 1 and then I can do an increment of 2 to 8. This is just like we've done in the array when you set the increment from the start value to the end value with the incremental value in between in the middle. You can do the same thing with a for loop. So here when we dis display it, it's going to print, the index will first be the value of 1 and then it's going to increment it when it reaches the end instead of by the default of 1, it will increment it by 2 more so it will give us the value of 3 for index and then two more after three will be five, and then seven, and then it will be nine, which will be greater than eight. And here you see, so it printed the first one right, then right, then left, then right, which is the first row, the third row, the fifth row, and the seventh row. Once it reached the value of eight, or the value of 9 in this case, it saw that it was greater than 8 and therefore stopped doing the loop. So this is how you're going to, in to implement the for loop. What you want to do with the for loop is go through the command string, command underscore str, and you want to create this command underscore num by first looking at each row, comparing that row. If it's a 0, you want to keep it 0. If it's a 1, you want to keep it to be 1. If it's left, you want to change it to 2. And if it's right, you want to change it to the value of 3. To do that, you're going to use what is called a switch statement. A switch statement will look at a specific line. In this case, we want it to look at the command underscore str line. And let's say that we want it to first just look at the first line. So it's going to look at the first line in command underscore str. To do the line, I do one comma and then everything on that line. So after the switch statement, you're going to type, it's called case. And since we're talking about um, character strings in the command underscore str, you need to put a single quote. So when it's a zero, we want a temporary variable to be equal to zero. If it's a one, then I want to set it equal to 1. If the case is that it is left, I want it equal to 2. And if it's right, I want it equal to 3. 
Once you've typed in all of your cases, you want to put in an otherwise statement where you can display just an error or display something so that you know that it didn't enter any of the cases. Once it goes through this case, the switch case statements, then you're going to just type end. In this case, when it looked at command underscore str, the first line was right, and so it wasn't this case, it wasn't this case, it wasn't this case. This case was the right case, so it saw that it was equal, and so it did set our temporary variable to 3. So now that I've looked at the first row, I can do the same thing but change this to be the second row instead of the first. And I see here that when I hit enter, I actually get an error. This is because command string has the value of 0 here, but if I do size on it, it tells me that I actually have an 8 row by 5 columns across. So what happens in a character array is that it fills in to make sure that the size is all the same, even though I have R-I-G-H-T here, it fills in the rest of these. As you can see, I can highlight them as spaces. So I want to get rid of all those spaces so that it just looks at the zero. I can see also that it is indeed a space by typing in command str. If I do 1 comma 5, I should get out, this would be my first element in the first row, my second column, my third column, my fourth column, and t will be my fifth column, so I'll see a T here. When I do the same thing for the second line, or even if I do it as the second column, so second row, second column, I see that the answer there's just nothing there, and it's because it is just a space. So I don't visually see it, but that's the reason why it wasn't entering in the switch statement correctly and I got an error here instead because it came in and did not match up the case statement being zero with the actual zero there. So there is a command to remove from the line any blank spaces and it's called deblank and you can type this in just front of it and you're going to put a parenthesis on the end. And again, I'll look at this as the second row. And when I hit that, the temp variable is now set to zero, which is what I want because command underscore str on the second row was indeed a zero. So you can see here now that I want to go through each of these rows. I've systematically just showed you for the first row and for the second row, I would have to type out that entire case switch case statement each time I look at a row. What I also notice is that the only thing that changes is this number here. It changes a 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll go through the whole thing up to 8. So I can create a for statement to be able to do that instead. I'll put that index variable as the number here. So I'll replace that number with the index variable name. The other thing that I want to do is this temp variable, I want to make sure that I keep appending it in each of the loops so that I end up with it having appended on each time the new number 
so we'll go up to 8. So the right will go here, and then the 0 will go here. So in my for, for statements, my for statement, I want to just make sure that it includes the index will go from 1 to 8, so it goes through each of these rows. I want to look at each row individually, so the index on that is going to be the row. And my switch statement will therefore be inside the for loop. Once I end the switch statement, I want to make sure that I put that temporary variable into this command underscore num. And since I'm going to be appending onto itself, I want to make sure to define command underscore num as an empty array first. So make sure you put an empty array. If my temp variable, for example, gets set to 1, what I want to do is put whatever I've had previously on command underscore num and then add on my temp variable. If temp now becomes 3, I want to make sure that I include it. I want to just make sure to include it again. And you can see here that each time it would then append on what I previously had. So pause this video and create this for loop with the switch statement so that you can create this command underscore num. If you implemented this correctly, your command underscore num will look like this, 303-121-30. If not, continue to debug it until you are able to get this in correctly. The next thing you want to do is create code words. So these code words, it's a 4 by 6 array of random ones and zeros. You can do this as you've done previously in the previous assignments by using the rand function to create a 4 by 6 array and then comparing it to 0.5. Otherwise you can use any other way to create a random 4 by 6 array of ones and zeros. The next thing you're going to do is use this code words along with command underscore num and you're going to create a command code. The command code will be 48 bits long. To create command underscore code, you're again going to use a for loop. The for loop is going to index this array here of command underscore num, so it will use first this value, then this value, this value, this value, so it will go from 1 to 8, and at each time, it's going to take the value. It will start here at the index of 1. And what you want to do is if this is a 3, you want to put in command code the fourth line because MATLAB always starts at 1 and not 0. So this 0 we need to change to a 1. So increment everything on this by 1. So if this value is a 3, it will get this line here and put it as the first 6 bits in command underscore code. Then the loop should go back and increase the index by 1 so that it then looks at this value from command underscore num. It sees a 0, you need to increment it by 1 to then have this row. This, this row will then be appended onto the value it previously had in it. So just like before, you're going to keep appending on the row in code words that comes from the value here plus 1. And you'll do that 8 times to be able to get the complete command underscore code with columns from 1 to 48. So pause the video and work on getting that so that you are able to achieve this command code, columns 1 through 48, using a for loop that indexes the values within this command underscore num. 
After you get that, you're going to create this noise array. The noise array is going to be from 1 to 48. You can use rand n to create an array of 1 to 48 values and compare them to 1.5. If the value is less than 1.5, then the noise should be a 0 in that location. If it's greater than 1.5, then you should have a 1. As you can see here, there's just a few bits in this noise of 1. This is going to simulate taking the command code itself, which is this 48 bit. These 48 bits, this is your command code that typically in a communication system you would translate into the cosines of the two different frequencies to represent a zero value and a one value, transmit them through to the other side and it would be received. While it's being transmitted, noise will intercept it and create some of these bits to change from ones to zeros and zeros to ones. So we're going to simulate all of that by just using an XOR function to XOR the noise and the command code and you're going to call it command RECV is going to be the variable of the XOR of those two. So it's only going to change a couple of the bits. Now what we want to do is process this command underscore RECV and translate it back into the text strings of the 0, 1, left, and right. So to do that, we're going to go back and review quickly how we got to the end transmission. First, there was the command underscore str. This is the message that we wanted to send. So we used a for statement and a switch statement to be able to create this command underscore num, where 3 corresponded with right, 2 with left, and then 1 and zeros. So we were able to get this array. From this array, we created the code words that were going to be used to translate these numbers into binary code. So the 3 corresponded to the fourth row here, 0 to 0. And then each of those 6 bits was appended onto each other to create a long sequence of 48 bits, and that we called command underscore code. With command underscore code, we added in the noise and had the command underscore receive. So this is what we actually re have received now. It does have some errors in it. So what we want to do is strip off the first six bits and compare them to the code words and see which one does it look the closest to. This is what you did in assignment number six. So this is the code from last time, assignment number six. So it's going to be similar to what you're going to want to do. The difference is, is that your quant underscore array is going to be the six digits that you get from the command underscore RECV. So you will replicate them four times and then compare and get the Hamming numbers. So the Hamming numbers, recall, determined the number of errors that was the difference between quant array and code words. So in this case, the minimum differences turned out to be there was one difference, and then all the other three had four differences. So one is going to be the minimum differences, and that is in the location of the array in position 1, which is going to correspond to the first row in code words. So the syntax to do that, so you have value comma index is equal to the min of Hamming underscore nums. That gives you, that ends up giving you a value of 1 and an index of 1, where in the Hamming underscore NUMS, the 1 is the value and the location, which is your index, is also 1. The command underscore RECV is the 48-bit data that has been received, and it does contain the noise. The first thing you're going to want to do is to make a copy of it,
because we are going to strip off the first six bits and you can put those so you're familiar with it from last time into the variable quant underscore data. So that is going to be the copy from one to six that will give you the first six bits. So now we want to take the command, the copy, and remove off of it the first six bits. So one way to do that is to type seven colon and then end and that will be to the end of it. So now we have the 48 minus the six we just took off and now we have the quant data. We can do what we did before in assignment number six and compare it to all of the code words. And you'll see here that it should be similar to the last one. So you should have a value of four as the minimum. So in your script file, after you've XORed the command underscore code with noise and gotten the command underscore RECV, you want to create the copy of that and then you also want to create a variable called command underscore DEC is equal to an empty array and a command STR RECV is equal to an empty array. These two arrays, the command underscore deck is the one that you want to match the command underscore num that you created before. And this one was the one that was in number form. And this one is going to be your command string that you originally sent. So you are going to have a for loop in your script file right at this point. You want the for loop to go from one to how many times you'll need to get through this 48-bit array. Recall that each time you're going through, you're stripping off six bits. In the for loop, for each iteration, the first iteration, you're going to grab the first six bits from this array. And recall, that's why you also did the copy. So actually extract it off of the copy one. And then alter the copy to then go through the seventh bit to the end. Make sure to only put the seventh bit through the end into the command, into this array only if it's not already empty. So you can use an if statement. So the if statement says if something is true, then you go ahead and do it. And the syntax is to end at the end. So if, in this case, we want to check if it's not empty, then we want to put the seventh bit to the end back in. Otherwise, it will just skip the statement. This is showing right before the for loop. So here I have my two variables that I set as empty arrays. And then I'm entering into my for loop here. Again, the for loop goes from one to however many times it needs to go through this to get all 48 bits, taking six bits at a time. So the first thing I want to do is strip off the first six bits from the copy that I made. Then I want to make sure that this is not empty. If it is not, then I'm going to reset it to be seventh bit through to the end. Then I want to compare the quant data and the code words using the Hamming distance that we did in assignment number six to determine which one is the minimum difference. So here I see that I have an exact match on this fourth row. So my min function is what I also use here to find 
the minimum value and the row it's located on. So there's going to be a 4. I'm then going to use this variable uh, of the row and I'm going to put it into command underscore DC and I need to subtract off 1. Recall that my, my command underscore nums from the very beginning went from 0 to 3 and I had to, to add 1 to them to be able to get the right rows from 1 to 4 of the code words. So then I want to use a switch statement and the switch statement uses the row minus 1 and then I have the case 0, case 1, case 2, and 3. For case 0, it's going to give me the string back of 0. 1 will give me the string of 1 left for 2. And when the case is 3, then I'll get the string of right. I want to then append that onto this variable here. So here I've named my temporary variable within the switch statement and each time I'm going to append that onto this other one. So now it's going to go back through the loop again. This time I grab the next six bits off of the copy part and then I append on, if as long as it's not empty, the seventh through end again. Then I compare the quant data to code words using the Hamming distance to see which one does it closely match. And I see here that again I have one that just differs by one difference and it's again on the fourth row. So I then use the switch command to translate that again to a 3 and then I append on the temporary variable from the 3 that's also in the switch statement onto my received string. I then strip the next six bits. The copy then gets the seventh through end again. I compare the quant data and code words. And again, I have the fourth row again. So I should get another three and write. And then I strip the next six. And this time I end up getting a 2 for my row, which would then be a 1 in the command underscore DC. And I should get a 1 to go in the command string received. And I keep doing that until I reach the end. So each time I am appending on the command string received and also appending onto the command deck. And I do this until I've gone through all of the data that was sent and I'll get this will become finally empty. And then I have in my command string received all of the the data that's now converted into the commands themselves. So you can see here that I started off with this and I ended up with an error that caused instead of going to a zero it went to right. So I do have an error in here. This is going to vary every time you run. Uh, one thing to note, uh, if you use the clear function that will clear all of your variables and CLC is used to clear the command window. You do want to actually clear this each time you run it with all your variables and in the command window. So again, you can see this one had quite a few more errors. This was my original string and I have an error in the beginning and an error here that has caused my data that's been now decoded to be an error. There are better correction codes. This was just a simple way to implement some of the MATLAB commands with this. So this concludes what you need for this assignment. So this concludes the assignment number seven. Make sure to type diary on and run your script file of the control underscore flow do diary off and email 
the files of the diary file in the control underscore M 